make this case. Uh, if you did not get them from the notes, if you didn't get an experienced guy, ushers would be happy to bring them to you. So just raise your hand and they can bring you an experienced guy, a pen, something to write with. A couple of different things in there, of course, information on the church. There is also a giving envelope, and I always folks, we do not pass buckets. There are boxes in the back of the room uh, where we where we give our tithes and our offerings that people put it on the way out. Just to tell you that, if it's your first time here, please do not feel compelled to give. We just want you to know that. Uh, but also there's a connect card if you need to sign up for something, you can not say prayer request. Any information you need, you can use that connect card. We would especially love for you to fill it out if it's your first time here. Uh, no hassle guarantee. Nobody's showing up at your front door or anything like that. We would just like to communicate some simple things about the church with you. And then, of course, sermon notes. So pull out your sermon notes, and we're going to jump into God's Word. But before we do, let me give you a couple of quick announcements. Uh, really excited about uh, different things that are coming up here. Uh, one is ladies. We're getting to be the last chance and only a handful of tickets left for refresh. So women's ministry is coming up um, October the 10th through the 12th. So get signed up for that. It's going to be a fantastic time. Uh, really excited about what God's going to do through our women at Refresh. Divorce Care, Divorce Care for Kids has started. And uh, if that's something you're interested in, please put it on a connect card so that we know. We really, um, I, I said this again, and I just want to emphasize it. I was the little kid. Uh, my parents divorced when I was seven. And I remember sitting um, on the front step with my luggage. And um, I forgot, they forgot to pick me up. And, uh, and I went through a lot, but didn't have a program like this. So if you know a kid who's been through a divorce, been through a family in that scenario, I really want to encourage you to, to encourage the family, or if it's your family, to look at putting them in this program to help them work through some of that stuff. Uh, I want to remind everybody, we released the app last week. So we've got a new church release app. If you haven't downloaded it yet, get onto your app uh, store and uh, or and or you can use the QR code right now. So if you want to pull out your smartphone, you can do that right now. We'll keep it up here for just a minute. Very excited about the app. We've got a lot of great feedback. It's been so much easier to navigate small groups, events, sign up, information, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can go there at the bottom of the page. There is a, a Bible. So there's a Bible app on there. I am working on right now a Bible reading plan. I just told Lizzie this morning I want to try to put it together this week. And here's my plan. The Bible reading plan will be a one-year reading plan that we have on your app for you. It'll start in June. The reason I'm starting is in June is because in the Bible reading, at Easter, you'll be at Easter. Does that make sense? Right? So I want to try to make it chronological from that standpoint. So we'll have that up. But there's a Bible app there. There's a place where you can go in. If you want to look up sermons, you can look up who taught, you can look up topics, uh, those types of things. So it's just a fantastic thing. I appreciate James and Lizzie, our staff members, who worked really hard to put all that together for us. So really, really grateful for them. Um, very excited also because uh, Leesburg Blue Foundation, the, the, the 5K is coming up. Please come, run, walk, crawl. Roll, whatever, right? 5K on the runway. They shut down the airport for two hours for us so that we can do this 5K. So come out and support the blue by being a part of that. And then I'm uh, very, very excited to let you know that uh, on September the 22nd, we have an African children's choir coming to join us here at Crystal Lake. Very excited. We need some host homes. So what that looks like is one of their chaperones and maybe a couple of kids uh, that you can give them a space it's a one-night deal, and, uh, and, and some transportation from here to that house and back. But uh, I think we got a little something to show you a little bit about what it looks like, so check this out.
Sunday night, we're going to do a full concert for us. So we'll come back next Sunday night to be a part of that um, and support what they're doing. So we're looking for houses. We're looking for houses. So if you've got um, a little extra room and you can have to do that, we would love to have you put that on the connection card today. Okay. Pull out your sermon notes. Um, I was going to start a brand new sermon series. And then uh, the lady who's part of our creative team who does graphics for us, they're right back to my uh, you're going to start that Sunday series on Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend is the least attended Sunday service of the entire year. Did you know that? But look at you, you're here. What is that? I'm really, really glad you're here. Way to go, yeah. So there's a lot more than you thought, but we decided to push it back a week and, and to have a standalone teaching today. And uh, so here's my question for you. Um, do we have any country music fans in the house? Any country music fans? Okay, you got a few. Very good. Uh, I'm sure you've heard that you don't know, really get when you play country music rapping. Yeah, you get your wife rapping, your dog dropping it up, right? So, uh, country music is notorious for losing things, right? Or, or whether there was a song you remember years ago written by Johnny Baker. And it went like this Take this dog in. Don't talk like that in French people with our rules. Right now, take this job and snub it, right? And so, in honor of the new Labor Day tomorrow, uh, I want to change the title of the song to this. Take this job and roll it. See, in Genesis, you may not have noticed this, but in Genesis, God gave them work to do before the fall. Did you know that work is not a punishment? Did you realize that work was actually what God intended for us to do before the fall? Did you realize that work was actually what God intended for us from the very beginning before he went to fall? But there's a call to work now. I mean, when I say job, or when I say work, to clarify all of what is in my mind, at least, I don't just mean those who put the clock, I don't just mean those who do it eight to five, or you run the graveyard shift, or whatever. I mean the stay at home moms for most of us. Probably the greatest job of our city, but not from my perspective. Right? I'm also talking about, I mean, these students, because you know what your job right now is? Ooh, getting paid. Come on, somebody. That's your job right now. I'm also talking about my retirees. Do we have any retirees in the house this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what your job is? Volunteering. Helping with green kids. Come on. That's exactly what y'all do for work, right? You play enough to the ball, and you do enough of that stuff, and you get to the point where you need yeah, but I need to do something with knowledge. Right? I need to do something with purpose. So I just, I want you to understand that here's the first time he takes a word to take this job and say, Solomon wrote these words in Ecclesiastes. So I hate my life. Because the work that he's done in the sun was greatest to me. All of it is meaningless. I'm chasing after the wind. My job's a joke. You know what it's all about? You better just go like, I'm not doing this. What am I doing? I just get a big day. Here's what they do know, because they've got to go to work for most of them. Don't go up and hear me going that I'm going to say, oh, I'm so I'm not even going to work anymore. You know what the Bible says? You don't work, Johnny. Come on, that's what the scripture says. But listen to this. Eighty percent of workers say that they are stressed. One million workers are absent every day because of stress. Is that a description? It costs, what does it cost for this stress thing? Activity and accidents. 25% of, of workers feel like screaming or shouting because of job stress. Anybody ever been there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this one's crazy. 10% are concerned that a co worker could become violent. 14% that that's me. I might become violent. Come on. Eighteen percent experienced some kind of threat or verbal intimidation in the last year. I read this statistics to my wife this morning, and she said, "Yeah, those are all school teachers." Wow, there's a lot going on there, right? So there's, there's a lot to that. Work can be a, a, a pretty serious issue in our lives, but I want you to hear this morning. That you can be in the middle of chaos, or traffic, or turmoil, or stress, and still have to keep the special message of the gospel. Jesus said that in this world, you will have issues. 
But take heart. What does that mean, take heart? It means have peace. Right? It means that even though I'm in the middle of a madness, that my heart is somewhat settled. He doesn't tell us to get rid of it, but he tells us to deal with it. Some of you are probably looking for a scripture and you're like, okay, Pastor Mike, give me that scripture that gets rid of my boss. No, it's not there. Right? It's, it's not there. Give me a scripture that tells me how, how to get rid of you things that I work next to. Like, is there any way that you can get transferred to Europe, maybe? It's not there. The promises of scripture are that there is a peace in the middle of the chaos. Right? There, there, there are very few scriptures that says, you're just going to have Mr. Bluebird on your shoulder. Come on, y'all. No, 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 no. We are to be ambassadors. We are to live out peace in the middle of, not the elimination of, sometimes, but sometimes we treat God like a celestial thing of us. God to do this and this and do that and give me this and get ready to use me at work. You know, train my boss up. But it's an exact agenda. It's to keep you peace and joy in the middle of the madness. That's the agenda. I got one amen on that one, right? Because you're like, no, that's not what I want to hear. But that's real. Listen to Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above. Where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. What does that mean? Daily put on a fresh attitude or a new perspective. How many, how many of you know you need to do that daily? How many of you know you need to get up every morning and to get into God's Word and try to find God's presence and put some worship music on? Why? Because I have got to get a perspective that is real, that is not of this world. Anybody? But how many of you know when you don't? It's just chaos. It's just madness. How many of you also know when you do that, it only lasts a day. Daily, it says, to set your mind on things, right? Matter of fact, Daniel would argue with that. Daniel would say, no, it lasts about four hours. Remember Daniel? It says that he prayed morning, noon, and night. So I, get, I always have this picture of Daniel being the guy like, okay, God, 7 a.m., you got to take me to 1130, brother. Right? And then he comes back at noon and goes, whoo. I'll be back at five to talk, but you're going to have to carry me for the next four or five hours, God. Come on, we got to do this, right? But the reality is we have to constantly renew our minds because it's, it's not going away. Colossians 3 and 12, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, look at these words, clothe yourself. Clothe yourself. How many of you woke up this morning and your clothes jumped on your body? Anyone? No, matter of fact, some of y'all stood in front of your closet going, I got nothing to wear. Right? No, 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 listen, it says, clothe yourself. In other words, it's a choice. It's an active thing that we do. What is it that we're to clothe ourselves with each day? Some passion. Kindness. How many of y'all know kindness just doesn't happen? But on 27. Right? Come on, you don't just wake up and go, I feel like you seem really compassionate today. Put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness. Here's a big one for me i got to close myself with. Patience. Come on, somebody. People are crazy, y'all. Listen to this. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on what? Oh, which binds them all together in perfect unity. It is a daily decision to put these things on. Someday, it is an hourly decision to put these things on, yes? Yeah? But once again, I would look at my coworker and go, Give me the case of God, so I'm not in the 14% that wants to punch somebody. Right? Give me, give me the, a sense on this God and then I go to correct this person that's being a knucklehead and they've done the same stupid thing four times at work and I'm having to help them all over again. The daily decisions. I want to, I want to just, here's my goal. Right up front, here's my goal. I want to give you a set of notes today. What I would like for you to do is I would like for you to go have a blast today. 
I would like you to go to the beach and do your cookouts and have a blast tomorrow. But tomorrow night, I want you to pick these notes up. I want you to pick these notes up and I want you to review them for Tuesday morning. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? That we would take this job and love it. We would take this job and put it into the perspective of why God might have me in this place. How many of you just, you really, really, really love your job? I only did that because I was checking my staff members, actually. No, I'm just kidding. Okay? okay. okay. Hey, but listen, that's a larger percentage than you see in a lot of places. You know what that tells me? That tells me a lot of you are grasping the idea of purpose. Right? That God has you on purpose in a place. And that's the number one thing I want to give you in your notes. Here's number one. If you want to make work something you love, and you're going to take this job and love it, number one, you've got to discover purpose. See, without purpose, you'll find your identity in your work, which will lead you to a false identity. You'll find your identity in a paycheck. You'll find your identity in a title. You'll find your identity, but the happiest people in the world don't have more finances than you, a better spouse than you, better kids than you. They have discovered calling. They have discovered purpose. They have put meaning. Even secular psychologists tell us this. For those of you who did Psychology 101 in college, you remember we studied the hierarchy of needs by Maslow. And Maslow's highest hierarchy of needs for mankind was incentive. To be a part of something bigger than myself. Purpose. Calling. Right? Meaning. All of us are called to do something in God's story. See, a, a, a career will give you something to live on. A calling will give you something to live for. Career will give you something to live on. A calling will give you something to live for or in a moment. And here's what I would say to you today. I know it's Labor Day weekend, but today is Life Step 1. That's what Life Step is all about, bro. It takes you on a journey of figuring out purpose. So if you hadn't been to Life Step today, you need to come right after service. Join me. It'll be 45 minutes today that we'll take, and we'll start a journey of helping you understand purpose and what God called you to do. A lot of people will go to work on Tuesday just paying the bills. A lot of people will go to work on Tuesday just because I want to lift you on my truck. Some of y'all are like, yeah, I do want to lift you. Pray for that back in So look in the first Corinthians 7 and 17. Nevertheless, each person should live as a believer in whatever situation the Lord has assigned to them. Just as God has called them, this is the rule I lay down in all of the churches. He has assigned them. Maybe for some of you, if you fulfilled your assignment there, you would get a new assignment. We'll let that one sit for a minute. Some of us have been whining about the place that we're in. Do you know what the holdup is? It's not God. It's not everybody else. It's our hard headed just not to learn what He wants us to learn in that place so we can move on. Right. I'm going to go off for a second. Forgive me. It's a mic moment. You ready? When I was growing up, never, ever, 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 ever did I hear my parents or anyone in my family that I can remember talk about their hourly wage. Not once. The first time I heard it, and having people talk about that, I thought it was so strange. I, I, I didn't get it. Because I grew up with, you make 35000 a year. You make 50000 You make 100000 whatever it is. And you do your job. And you do your job with excellence. But you know what, in my opinion, hourly does? Hourly goes, well, I'm taking the time. Am I getting paid for this? That's a minimalist mentality. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? See, I'm not looking for somebody to show up at work on my staff just counting the hours down. I thought, this extra time, though. Do we get overtime? Do we get extra for this? Right? I, I want you to understand a mentality that I think has happened in our culture. This is entitlement. We point at entitlement in other people. But I wonder about us. 
from the standpoint of, well, am I getting what I deserve and I have rights? And I compare other people's jobs to my job. I compare what other people make to what I make. So how come they make more than I make? Well, because they negotiated a better deal than me. Can, can I be that boy when you come away? And this whole idea of fair? Fair is not that everybody gets the same thing. That's, that's not a healthy thought process. Because if so, then your son and your daughter both get dresses for Christmas. That's fair, right? No. Fair is that everyone gets what they need. And for those of you who go, well, that's my ears just going off. You know, that's not going to be necessarily difficult. Oh, really? Because there's a story, a parable, about a guy who pays people for the day's wages. And there's a guy who works all day long, and there's a guy who works one hour. And you know what he does? He pays them the exact same way. And here's the story. The person says, why does it matter to you? I made a deal with them. Listen to me. We've got to get to a place where we understand work, not just simply from a paycheck. I got it. you got to pay the bills. I got it. You've you, 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 you got to put some groceries down your, your kid's throat. I get it. But the reality is, is there's something bigger to work than a paycheck. There's something that God has called you to do in that place. There's a reason that you are there. And for those of you who think, I've been passed up, and I've been passed up, and it's not fair, and somebody else got, uh, got a, a raise, and I didn't get a raise, maybe it's got nothing to do with the boss and nothing to do with anything else. Maybe it's God's working on your children. Some of us are running around the same mountains, not because we have a bad boss and a bad workplace, but because we have a bad soul. We have, we have put ourselves in a place where we're bitter and we're angry. And our attitude is, I deserve and I want. Come on now. Number two is this. Listen to me. You've got to understand that vocation is a ministry location. Vocation is a ministry location. Ephesians 2 and 10, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good what? Works. To do good work. He, he, he wants you to work. He, he wants you to do something and, and, and work. But in that place, he wants you to be an example of his life and love and happiness and joy. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Anybody, anybody ever work with a Debbie Downer? Lord, have mercy. Come on, y'all. It's terrible. Right? No matter what you say, you can be like, oh, my gosh, look at this. We have, we have an interesting increase in profit. Yeah, but we got to pay for the air conditioning and we got to pay for the heat and the heat. Anybody ever been in that? Yeah. This is for me. Who are you called to be in your workplace? Who are you called to be in your school? It's not just about a diploma and it's not just about a paycheck and it's not just about taking care of the grandkids. God has us on a segment, y'all. Have we forgotten that we're on a screen? Even Paul, listen to me, for those of you who go, yeah, well, that's easy for you, Pastor Mike, because your calling is your career. Well, did you know most people in the Bible that wasn't true? Come on, most people in the Bible that wasn't true. And especially Paul. Do you remember Paul? Acts 18 and 1. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. And isn't it isn't funny you read Aquila and you think female, and then it says wife Priscilla. That's why I always read that. Anyway, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome, Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker, as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath, he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. What does that say? That says, Paul punched the clock, making sense during the week. And then he went to church and preached the gospel. Right? I thought, the calling of each one of us. Do you know that there are 40 miracles in the book of Acts? 39 of them happen in the workplace. For those of you who grew up, in a Pentecostal, Charismania kind of a scenario. It's funny how we will schedule revival on a Friday night at 7 p.m. because we know when the Holy Spirit is going to move, right? But according to this, the miracles happen out there, y'all. This is just not here when Christians can get together and put on a show for one another. It's that the Holy Spirit empowers us and we go into the workplace and the miraculous things happen there because... 
we think that will work for them. Come on, y'all. Right? Sometimes I think we compartmentalize you guys. We're the worst of this. Thing. Man, we got boxes, right? We pull out this box and we talk about this right now. You want to talk about something else? I got to put that box away and pull this one out. And ladies, guys, you have a nothing box. What, what, are, you, what are you thinking about? Nothing. What are you just thinking about? Nothing. That's impossible. Ladies, we can think about nothing because we are boxes. And so, men, you can compartment a little us. I'm here at church now. I'm going to pull out my church and my Jesus box. But on Tuesday morning, when I walk back into the office, I'm going to put that away and I'm going to pull out my work box. Come on, y'all. That's not how this works. Not for people. Colossians 3 and 23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Let me ask you a question. You want to raise for 15 years, or you want to raise for eternity? Because when I read my Bible, it says this. If you receive your reward here, you have received your reward. In other words, you won't be rewarded there. Hmm. Wait a minute. I'm just changing my heart a little bit. Do, do, do I want to get this raised from this box here for the next 10 years, 15 years? Or do I want him to forget about it and I want God to go, I got you for eternity? Come on, that's understanding the eternal nature and the reality of God being a part of what we're doing. Let me say it to you this way. Your work is a statement of how worthy God is. Your work, the way you work, the excellence at which you work, the passion that you put into it, it is a statement of God's work in your life. Why? Because we work for Him, not for people. First Peter is, is, is a... Um, I'm, I'm going to end with that. Verse 15, y'all can come on and start to get ready. I, I, I want to walk through First Peter, and it's a little dangerous to walk through this scripture uh, in our current day and age and, and in the uh, election year type of deal. Because the first word of First Peter 2 and 18 is slaves. I want to talk about this for just a moment because it compares it to the workforce and it fits for us. So for some people that get caught up on slaves, this is where somebody will go, oh, wait a minute. See, the Bible, it, 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 it approves of slavery. No, it doesn't. The Bible just acknowledges that slavery has been a part of every culture since the creation of man. It's not a black and white issue. It's not a brown. It's not a red or green issue or whatever other color you want to come up with. The reality is that slavery has been an issue of man overpowering man in all different directions since the beginning of man. But the reason I believe that this is in the scripture is because it is the worst possible scenario. Are you here on the same thing? Like that even if you are a slave to someone, let's read what it says. First Peter 2 and 18. Slaves in reverent fear of God submit to your master. So let me say it to you this way. Employee. In reverent fear of God submit to your bosses. Unless they tell you something something that goes against God's word. And then Y'all didn't like that one very much. I got like four amen. Come on. Like, this is, this is, this is where it gets real. Like, today, if we're, if we're going to get a little, a little real about real life, and we're not just going to have some pretty flowery sermon today, but we're going to do something that, yeah, we got to put the work out there, and it's the real deal. What does Tuesday morning look like? Will you, in reverent fear of God, submit to your boss or leave? That's the crazy thing is you're, you're not a slave. Nobody's keeping you there. Please don't be the person that stays in line. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Like you have a choice. Like when we go to work on Tuesday, am I going to submit in reverence here or am I going to leave? Am I going to just do something else? And God, will you release me to do something else? But let me remind you, I transcribe working on your character. So make sure you're released from him so you not just because they're not. Are you doing what I'm saying to you? For those of you who, right now, you can think of the circuit work, the overpowering boss, the control freak, whatever it is, just think some of you have some pretty classic scenarios that you go to on the circuit work. In reverent fear of the God. 
God, what are you trying to teach me? What is it that you're trying to work on in my heart? I won't, I won't tell the whole story, but I, I got frustrated this week and I, I lost my temper on the inside. I didn't yell, right? But on the inside, I was screaming. And I walked away from the situation while I was going, I was wrong with you, Mike. Are you crazy? Not, not what's wrong with them. Why can't I stay cool in that situation? Why do I let my temper rage? Right? Like, it's kind of for us to stop and look at us in this process. So let me, let me give you a, a principle based on that. Let me read the whole thing. Slaves and reverence fear of God, submitting yourself to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those are who are harsh. So listen to me. Here's the principle. Work hard and work well. Work hard and work well. Why? Because you're doing it for God. What does that mean? First to arrive, hardest worker in the room, last to leave. Come on, somebody. First one to arrive, hardest worker in the room, last to leave. Are, are we getting overtime for this? I don't know. You want man to pay you for overtime? You want God to pay you for overtime? Come on. You've got to get back to a mentality of understanding. I've got to bring God to work. Verse 19. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of injustice suffering because they're conscious of God. It is commendable that when something unjust is done to you, that you stand up in the middle of that suffering because you're conscious of God. Right? That in the middle of something being wrong, and that person that started way after me getting the promotion before me, or whatever it is. So here's the principle. Use the good and the bad to advertise. Advertise what? God's glory. Use the good and the bad at work to advertise. Your response, your reaction. Tell the story of who God is. To the person around you. Start something for me with a great collaboration and have a job. Come on, y'all. Don't be the one at the water cooler. The boss, this, and they want to sit there and make money. They've never even been in our position before. No, when they start that, you be the one that says, but you got to have a job, and wow, it's nice, but we're standing in the air for this right now. Somebody's going to do it. Come on, it's, it's a perspective, it's an attitude. 85% of the time, people are hired for their attitude. It's an attitude. It's your attitude life. Like? It's amazing this way. I found this thing. I didn't make this stuff much. Gratitude is the attitude that sets the altitude of your life. Gratitude is the attitude that sets the altitude of your life. Of your life. Verse 20, and I'm almost done. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing what is wrong? Is there something wrong? What is the context of work? You get written up for doing something wrong and you endure it. You know, if you do something wrong, you should have to endure it. But if you suffer for doing good and endure it, it's commendable before that. Of course, going to get wrong at work. Of course, things are going to go haywire. Of course, somebody's going to push the numbers and see. We were hunted by sinners. And how we respond to that tells the story of who God is in our lives and in our hearts. We're going to be God's work. 
we going to talk bad about you? Yes. All of those things are going to happen. Why is it we are surrounded by sinners but we're going to be blessed with things that we want? Father, we want to take what we do in our lives and say, use us to bring your kingdom through our work, through our school, wherever we volunteer. We want your kingdom to come through us, Lord.
Father, will you use this this week to let your presence be made known everywhere you place us, in our schools, at our jobs, wherever we volunteer, in our families, Lord, in our neighborhoods, Lord. We want you to take the work that we do and let it be glorious before you so that the world will see how great our God is. Use us, Lord, for your purpose and your glory. Let us take delight in honoring you with our work. Let people experience heaven, heaven on earth, because your presence is with us. 
and we take you with us everywhere we go. Bless us as we enjoy this week in your presence. Bless our families. We thank you and we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May you have an amazing week in the Lord. Take God with you and have an amazing, amazing Sunday. You are free to stay back and worship with us if you are feeling inclined to do so. We're going to build our hope on Jesus today and every day. Can we trust on his name today? Take my hope.